This is part 4 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss retrieving data using stored procedures with Link to SQL. This is continuation to part 3, so please watch part 3 before proceeding. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. To keep this example simple, let's remove the login code that we have here. And let's run the application. Now let's go back to SQL Server and then open SQL Profiler. Let's run a new trace and let's click this Get Data button. And if you notice SQL Profiler, this is the SQL query that gets executed against the underlying database. Now instead of this ad hoc SQL statement, we want a select stored procedure to be executed. So let's look at the steps involved. So the first step is to actually create the stored procedure itself. And if you look at the select stored procedure here, it's pretty straightforward with a single select statement. So here we are selecting all the columns from employees tables. And uh, to speed things up, I already have the stored procedure here. So let's go ahead and execute this SQL. And let's refresh the stored procedures folder. So there we have the get employees stored procedure. Now let's go back to Visual Studio. And let's view the Server Explorer, expand data connections, and now let's refresh the stored procedures folder, and we should see the get employee stored procedure. Now, when we drag and drop tables onto the link to SQL designer, you know, for every table a class will be created. Similarly, when we drag and drop a stored procedure onto this designer surface, an equivalent c -sharp method will be created. So here we have classes for department and employees tables. Now let's drag and drop this stored procedure. So look at this, we have this get employees method automatically created. Look at the name of the method, it matches with the name of the stored procedure. Okay, so all that is left now is to actually invoke this method and within the code behind file at the moment, you know, this is the link query that we are issuing. Instead of that, we have the db context object. So db context dot get employees. Look at this. Let's run the application. Let's clear this trace and let's click get data button. So we have the employee data loaded. Let's stop this and look at this. So if you look at this trace here, notice that get employee stored procedure is executed. Now let's inspect the C sharp method that is generated. So this is the method that represents our stored procedure. Now let's right click on this and then go to the definition. And if you look at the return type of this method, look at this, it is returning something called I single result of get employee result. So there are two things that we need to understand here. First of all, I single result does not mean this method is going to return a single employee record. It means it's going to return a single result set. Okay, a, res a single result set for the list of all employees. And then look at the return type, get employee result. Now we didn't define this class. So where did this class come? Um, it is auto-generated. Okay, and if you look at the naming convention, it follows. Get employees is the name of the stored procedure. And then to that, this result word is appended. So get employees result is the return type. Now, is it possible to modify the return type of this method? Absolutely, and there are two ways we can do that. Now, if you look at this get employees method, what are we actually expecting this method to return? A list of employees, right? So we want this method to return an employee type. Um, and to change the return type, one way is if we go back to the link to SQL class designer, so right click on the method, go to its properties, and then look at this return type here. At the moment, it is auto-generated type. Okay, instead of that, let's select this employee type. We have a warning, click yes on that, and then now run the application just to make sure it's still um, returns the data. So let's get back. So we still get the data. Now if we go back 
to this get employees go to the definition on that look at that now the result uh, return type is employee so I single result of employee okay so that's one way another way is at the time of creating the stored procedure we can I mean we have a way to modify the return type now if we go to the server explorer and if we drag and drop this directly on the designer surface then by default it uses the default naming convention that is the name of the stored procedure plus result word okay now if I drag and drop this on this employee type then the return type of this stored procedure is going to be employee so now if we let's save the changes let's go to get employees go to definition and look at that its return type is employee. So in this video we have seen how to use a select stored procedure with link to SQL. In our next video we'll, we'll discuss how to perform insert, update and delete using stored procedures. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.